Today we gave you an insight of our imaginations of factory of the future. Let me conclude and summarize this. All intelligent devices are connected with each other. Every device is with OPC or a web server web visualization or one or more field buses that they have and equi are equipped with. Yes, you hear correctly, there will be field buses in 2025. Whether the manufacturer or somebody else uses this hierarchic structure or whether this, the person takes these options for other topologies, a star, a network, that is just up to this person. Codesys enables the devices and thus giving them new opportunities. Each and every device has directly or indirectly access to the cloud. Indirectly via the Codesys automation servers, directly through one or several web protocols. Thus, data can be sent to the cloud from devices and can be read from the cloud from the devices. Why do we consider cloud connectivity to be so important in the future? Well, the one thing which is talked about by everyone is, well, performance and computer performance is available there infinitely. Cloud services could analyze the data, and when there are data anomalies, the personnel and the staff can be notified. There will be several examples where cloud services help optimizing our services and our processes. Let me show you one thing. When producing cars, the front windows are glued in. After the hardening process of the glass, they do have minimal they do have minimal differences with regards to thickness and this cannot be uh, considered in certain stages. Let's assume in the production process this window is measured in detail. The data is sent to the cloud and then there is a new calculation of the curve which is then sent back to the production um, facility. So the robot can thus add the glue um, way better and the lifetime of the window will improve. That is just one example how cloud services can help us optimize our processes. All devices are directly or indirectly connected with the code system automation server. It manages the source code, backups, parameters, all settings. It has access to all data of the factory. The client, a SCADA system, a ERP system, or a cloud, can get this uh, the data from the server. Whether you well, you can use this automation server as a cloud server. You do save installation and operation of your own server. You can also have the Codesys automation server locally on site in your company if you don't want to give away the data outside of your company. No matter which option you choose, the server actually offers you access to all programs and data of your systems and plans. All devices in the network and the Codesys automation server itself are always up to date with regards to IT security. So if there are attacks from the outside, then we can successfully um, counterattack them or defend them. 
the topology editor or the threat modeling as we call it gives you a very quick and simple overview of the security level of the whole system. Codesys ideally supports you when creating certificates, passwords, or um, with encrypting the communication. If there is a security update available for a device, the operator of the Codesys automation server is notified via the Codesys automation server. Usually, you will agree to such a security update, as you do today with the gods when it comes to a Windows update. It is, we can also implement firmware updates without stopping the application. So in my slide, you can read firmware online change. I learned today that it's actually called hot swap. The application, the application engineer doesn't talk about codes as versions, compiler versions, runtime versions, or library versions. That's not what he deals with. He does not install any software to his notebook, tablet, or smartphone. He solely needs a browser, internet access, and the connection to a codes automation server. The Codesys automation server has a fully V3.5 compatible engine. All Codesys editors and user interfaces are web-based. All applicant application engineers which are con who are connected to the server do use the same Codesys version. And usually this version will be the latest version. The responsibility for compatibility to the devices and the libraries solely lies with the system, i.e. with the Codesys automation server and the underlying Codesys engine. For the applicant, application engineer or the user, the upper software layer is the topology of um, his devices. This topology can, depending on the interest of the user, can be different. Thus, the operator of a production plant can bring in all the systems in one topology, so all the devices of this production plant. A plant manufacturer can bring together all the systems in one topology. And if he connects everything with an automation server, he has access to all systems. He has an operation all over the world. Well, of course, not only stationary systems can be brought together to one topology. Even if you have mobile machines, for example, cranes, um, mowers, or other big devices, they also can be included in one topology. Let's have a look at one specific use case. I want to make a change in a device which is located in Australia. How do I do that? Well, it's not a live demo. We are in the year 2025, but I will do that in 2025 then as a live demo. First of all, you do connect the, your smartphone with the Codesys automation server. So after connecting with the Codesys automation server, all topologies which are available are listed. So I select the topology where my system is incorporated. Well, the touch screen is a bit slow. So the topology is listed. I do see all devices within the topology and the connections between each other. In the next step, I do select the device. I want to make a change. 
I do receive a list of device-related services. It can be different ones. See, I do have a controller, so it makes sense to have a look at the security level, the status. It can be several online services. We said we want to change the application. Thus, we select application. And I will then reach the code's object tree. I navigate to the right uh, spot. I go to the program spot. And then I do get in my browser a CFC. And then I can trigger the change. It can also be done on a smartphone. It will not be the standard in order to program, but it could make sense for small changes or minor changes. So I do make the change. Um, run the application again or um, save it. Of course, I could run the application, but we do suggest making several tests. We do have the test automation here that allows you or enables you to create automatic tests. That is actually what I would do here carry out a test run, and if the test run is successful, I start the application and everything is fine again. Not only programming, but also visualization will change. We think the target visualization and CODES' HMI will grow together. All devices, all intelligent and smart devices are equipped with a web visualization. Also, the automation server can have a web server and web vis visualization. All operation elements have browser, fu browser functionality. To create your visualization, Codes offers several elements libraries. We will extend that offer and you can choose which elements you want to use. And you can add them to your project. But furthermore, you can also take web-based elements you find on the web or something like that. You can include them into your project and connect them with codes as variables. Well, I found some elements here, so let's put them in our project. Versioning is a crucial part of the CodeSys automation server. Every change will be protocoled and has a new version number. In order to access your de or devices or spots in your topology, use bookmarks, just as you do today in your browser. Everything is browser-based, if you remember. You have to exchange a device? Well, not a problem at all. The automation server, and that's what we learned several times, has backups for parameters and programs of all connected devices. So you just take out the broken device, exchange it with the new device, the new device is connected, and you identify this new device via the automation server and you just install the backup and you can continue with the production. Here we see a green control. It might also be the case that not only codes as programmable devices are in factories of the future. You cannot exclude that. At the moment, several groups work on standards for an extended access to third-party devices. But you can already access those things through OCOPA. The idea is that you can also identify third-party devices so that there is a connection and a communication between um, the device and the server. So you could well start or stop um, third-party devices, and depending on 
the information the third party device actually offers and transports, you can do several, um, activate or deactivate several functions. And that's the way how you can connect with third party devices and use them as well. We are quite sure that those new technologies will not be seen in factories only. IIoT will be seen in all industries where CODESIS is used today. Where is CODESIS used? In which industries? Well, we've talked about building automation, many equal controllers are managed, IIoT will be of great use. Fleets will be connected and networked, and our new solutions will be used in these industries as well. And also in the industries of energy and process automation. So those new technologies can be used to increase productivity, and we are convinced of that fact. No matter which industry you work in, you will only benefit with codes from these new technologies. Codes will be the backbone of the industry 4.0 and your automation of the future. Well, let's get started together. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.